If any doubt remained about how far mainstream Republicans have strayed from defending or even remembering the real American way, it should finally lie to rest with news that the American justice system is now considered by Republicans a last resort. Our fourth story tonight, the former mayor of New York City arguing against his city's right to see justice done for September 11th. Rudy Giuliani yesterday responding to word that the Obama administration will end Mr. Bush's years of delay and bring Khalid Sheikh Mohammed to trial in New York City. He made the bizarre argument that America should not do that because that's what Mohammed wants us to do. After the 2006 trial of the so-called 20th hijacker, Zacharias Musawi, you said, it shows that we can give people a fair trial, that we are exactly what we say we are. We are a nation of war. Uh, respectfully, Mayor, you supported civilian yeah. trials for terrorists then. And, and if there's no other alternative, I support civilian trials for terrorists. <sighs> Since when is America in the business of relying on its justice system as a last resort? And, by the way, when is America in the business of granting the wishes of terrorists? Well, when they wish for a lawyer, phone call, jury of their peers, or to face their accusers. When they wish for a last meal, perhaps. Mr. Giuliani, a former prosecutor in New York, should know better. It's no shame to be afraid, but what they really want, Mr. Giuliani, is not a New York City trial. We call them terrorists because what they really want is to frighten us into changing how we do things, who we are. And that is precisely what Mr. Giuliani, who once suggested he should stay mayor even after his term expired, proposes to give them. It is a principle Mr. Giuliani used to understand, declaring after 9-11, quote, a renewed devotion to the rule of law. Mr. Giuliani called on his abandonment of traditional American principles, called on it from left and from right. Here's the left. When the 20th 9-11 uh, bomber was tried uh, in Virginia in a, uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in a civilian court and convicted, uh, Mayor Giuliani testified in that case and he heralded the, uh, heralded the outcome. So he may have changed his view, but we haven't changed ours. And three prominent hardcore right-wingers, former congressman and presidential candidate Bob Barr, American conservative union chairman David Keene, and Americans for Tax Reform President Grover Norquist are not only defending the administration's decision to try and imprison terrorists on U.S. soil, but also said, quote, the scaremongering about these issues should stop. Here with us tonight, MSNBC political analyst Jonathan Alter, also national affairs columnist for Newsweek magazine. John, thanks for coming in. Hi, Keith. Any reason other than uh, I'm scared not to try terrorists here and then toss them into, you know, good old-fashioned U.S. high-security inescapable prisons? Actually, some reasons that the administration office, you know, there's a group of them that, w that will be tried in military mm -hmm. tribunals. Um, those are, the, uh, are uh, detainees for whom there's not enough independent evidence. In the case of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, there's so much evidence, they don't even have to go to the waterboarding uh, details. They've got voluminous evidence on which to get a conviction, and they will get a conviction. My question for Giuliani is, if he doesn't want to do anything that uh, the terrorist wants, mm -hmm. how about if Khalid Sheikh Mohammed wants to be executed, which a lot of them do? Will, he, will Giuliani then say, well, he wants to be executed. We can't execute him. I don't think Rudy will take that position. And yeah. like him or not, he used to get that our law beat their terror. That was one of the principles, and that was something he yeah. abided by right. in the wake of the first World Trade Center bombing. It's easy to slip into pop psychology on mm -hmm. these things, but what are, is it too wild to say that, he, that this is classic post-traumatic stress disorder, or what <laughs> happened to him? I, I think it's just situational scaremongering. You know, he became very very political uh, when he wanted to run for president and he decided after doing a great job right after 9-11 that he would do anything he could to uh, to politicize this to, to his advantage. You know, somebody in the Justice Department made a great point, which is that if, if Giuliani were still mm. the U.S. attorney for the Southern District uh, of New York, which he was for many years in the Reagan administration, he would now be bombarding the Justice Department, let me bring this case. You know, he, he's just not a prosecutor anymore, so suddenly he doesn't care about all his fellow prosecutors. He knows that uh, if the shoe were on the other foot and he were still a U.S. attorney, he would want to bring this case. About these three conservatives who I mentioned who are criticizing Mr. Giuliani, particularly for his opinion, 
and particularly Mr. Barr, uh, who is now in agreement with me uh, that this is scaremongering. If this is the consensus, that yeah. Bob Barr <laughs> right. and me, it's not the first time it's happened, but it's a rare event. Bob yeah. Barr and me and Grover Norquist. How bad has the GOP become in terms of trying to exploit this deadly serious issue for political advantage? Pretty bad. I mean, these guys were also, to their credit, against the Patriot Act, yep. uh, and they they have stood up on some of these issues. But you know, they are principled conservatives, even if you disagree as I do with you know ninety eight percent of of what they stand for. So much of the Republican Party now, and unfortunately, this includes Giuliani, they're not principled anything. You know, they're for uh, big spending on uh, prescription drug benefits if if that helps them in the you know. 2006 midterms or whatever, they do what is in their partisan interest. And, and so when every so often somebody comes along and, and actually says what they really think rather than what the talking points from the RNC are telling them to say, it's a good thing. But how does, uh, but how does Giuliani uh, stomach the fact that the 2006 Giuliani contradicts him? I mean, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah. it's, it's on the record that he believed the Musawi trial, even though it did not result in the death penalty he hoped for, and he's entitled to that opinion, yeah. certainly, but he endorsed the entire process. What, 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 is there no little Rudy Giuliani angel on his shoulder going, you're screwing up here, if not saying you're, you're doing the wrong thing? Consistency. I mean, Keith, you and I live in New York. We remember yeah. when he was mayor and he was, you know, uh, what he said uh, a couple days earlier would be, you know, in Ron Ziegler's phrase, inoperative. Yeah. Uh, convenience required an, a new view. So what this tells me about him is that he's politically ambitious still. Maybe he's going to run for governor of New York. Uh, and uh, he's trying to score points. It's very interesting that Mayor Bloomberg takes a very different view. He welcomes mm -hmm. uh, the prosecution in New York. He thinks it's symbolically important to do. The other thing that we haven't mentioned is that this will bring a faster conviction than in the military tribunals. Mm -hmm. Because the tribunals are uncharted waters, there's much more room for appeal. Remember, after a tribunal, there's an appeal up to the Supreme Court, and those appeals will take longer than uh, the appeals in this case. So if you want him brought to justice more quickly, it's still going to take several years, uh, then you should favor this option. And there's one name to add to the list of those people who are supporting this. That's the police commissioner of the city of New York, of New York Mr. Kelly. Yes of the city of, of New York who's, who thinks this is the right thing and can be easily handled, uh, comparatively speaking. Jonathan Alter of Newsweek and MSNBC. Great, thanks. Thanks, Keith.